Hello, Kenwin. Hello. Hello, Kenwin. Is that Robert? Yes, speaking. Is that Robert? Yes, speaking. Okay. Thank you. Nice to hear your voice. Thank um, you. Kenwin. Kenwin Turner. Have we met before, Robert? Um, I I haven't been to Burnley um, for a, no um, I haven't been to Burnley so I don't think we've met we might have have we spoken on the phone I'm not too sure. No, I'm not either. Whereabouts are you located, Robert? Oh, um, a long way away from you. I'm in the south southwest of England. I tried phoning local Kingdom Halls, but there's no response. The phone just rings, and okay. if you leave a message, nobody answers. No, because uh, the halls are actually closed at this time, yes. aren't they? Yes. So if it's a local, how did you get my number? A charity commission website. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> that yeah. is really good. That's the benefit. So you've been able to go and check that out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that is so nice. Okay, well, that's lovely that you managed to get hold of someone, because if you'd called our Kingdom Hall too, we... Uh, we're not, um, I don't even know if we have an answering machine there or not. But anyway, with us not using the hall, with yeah. us being in the um, lockdown situation, then uh, that's not possible. So, mm. have you lived up here before? Robert? No, no, no. Or are you, are you from the south? Yes, yes, I'm from the southwest. Lovely. Yes, I come from and, Cornwall. Uh, from Bournemouth? I come from Cornwall. I was... I lived the first years of my life in Cornwall, but I'm now currently in Devon. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Have you got some nice temperate climate down there? No, it's horrible. It's raining. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the sunshine today up here. So that's nice. But 9 degrees is fun. It's, it's strange, isn't it, the yes. weather that we have these days? Yes. In fact, one thing I should have done, um, which I haven't done, I should have gone to Torquay. I went to Torquay the other year and we didn't pass the Glen Eagles hotel you know that's the hotel that um the Monty Python team stayed in and which John Cleese got his idea for 40 towers oh okay um apparently <laughs> they are um they they're going to pull it pull it down and build something new so i i should have really gone there shouldn't i and had tea at the original 40 towers hotel before they pulled it down it's something i should have done and i didn't which, which i regret yeah, that would have been that would that would have been one for the uh, for the archives, wouldn't it? Yes, it's 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 called the Glen Eagles Hotel. Apparently, there was a really funny thing that that happened when one of the Monty Python team, Michael Palin, checked into the hotel. He had a, a large ticking alarm clock in his suit in his suit suitcase. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Sinclair, and this is a true story, Mr. Sinclair, who was the manager of the hotel. He he thought he could it could have been because this was the nineteen seventies. He thought it could have been an IRA bomb, so he took the suitcases, Mister Palin's suitcases, and he threw them over a cliff. <laughs> He's either a cliff or a wall, a wall or a cliff. He threw them. So when Michael Palin got to his room, he says, "Where are my suitcases?" And Mister Sinclair, the manager, pointed to some some cliff, and they chucked the suitcases off the cliff because he thought they were an IRA bomb. And it's a shame they never Actually, put they that into. Really... <laughs> That's a true <laughs> story. Is real life is... yeah. And it's a <laughs> shame they never put that into Forty Towers. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat real life for comedy. It no. only it only needs caricaturing, doesn't it? Yes. And that's, that's the best comedy you can have. Yes. Characters in real <laughs> life. So, Robert, you've been looking a little bit at our website and and, uh, and and so on. Have you had some contact with the with the witnesses? before um yes i've spoken to them at the carts but i haven't found them very helpful they just say go to jw.org so i haven't found jw's helpful i did go oh, through okay. your yellow book oh more than 10 years ago um i went through oh, okay. uh, the book well really twice i i did the first four chapters with one elder or jehovah's witness and he then said yeah. at chapter four it's not for you robert because you believe in the trinity so that was the end of it and I did go through, oh, okay. a bit before that, the whole of the book, um, reading each chapter at a time, which I'd never do again. That's a total waste of time. And in the end, you, you just race through the chapter just to get to the end of it. Um, I was extremely offended with the guy because he said to me, if you read this book with me, I'll answer all your questions. So when we raced through the chapters, I was getting nothing out of it. Um, 
when we got to the end of the book, he said, well, if you read this other book, I'll answer all your questions. So I, I finished it there and then. I said, look, you gave me your word. You'd answer my questions and you're not. So that's that. That's it. Oh, that's, uh, that's a shame. It ended up in such a disappointing way there. Were, were there some uh, major questions there, Robert, that you, um, that you in particular, uh, or was it just... Uh, sort of generally a, a number of them that came along the way or are there some that you've you've had for some time some questions that that you feel you 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 you, you didn't get the answer um all of or, those yes all, 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 all of those yeah yeah, yeah. Are, are, are there is there a uh, is there a top five <laughs> is, is <there laughs> or something a... like that so, just to give me an idea of where of where you're coming from on, on that one so that um, um, yeah. my 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 background kenwin is i used to be an evangelical christian i was baptized in 1985 in a pentecostal church assemblies of god church in west london called Peniel chapel it was quite close to kensington temple just down the road from kensington temple um yeah. i fell away i then got involved in oneness which is a anti-trinitarian form of pentecostalism huge throughout the world in south america and asia um at least a quarter of all uh pentecostals are are oneness they're they're non-trinitarian it's huge um yeah. i i was involved in that for just under a year and then um yeah. i left and became a vehement trinitarian but um, um, I, 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 I didn't see any passion or zeal for truth in a lot of the churches that I visited. I was living in London at the time. I tried quite a few. Yeah. Um, and the final straw for me was I went down to um, Cornwall again. I went to St. Austell Baptist Church and my home group leaders told me to my face that the Trinity was pagan the son was created and the Baptists didn't baptize correctly. And they had a leadership position in, in St. Austell Baptist Church. Um, and it's just See, a joke. So, no, yeah, it's, it's just a complete right. joke because these people don't know what they believe. They just make it up as they go along. On the other hand, yeah. you have other other types who, who are educated and will know the Bible better than me, Anglican and Methodist types. And some of them are very godly men who I deeply respect. But a lot of these people in the more traditional churches just have no zeal or passion for God. They just want an easy, comfortable life. Yeah. So you've no, got the two true, problems. Right? You've got the evangelicals who are keen but clueless. And they're largely a bunch of idiots who you really do need to keep away from because they don't know what they're talking about. They just make it up as they go along. On the other hand, you have a sort of more traditional um, group who, yes, are well-educated and do know what they're talking about, but they just don't take it seriously. They're, they're completely half-hearted about it. And um, I guess I've given up looking for people who are knowledgeable, but also have the zeal. <laughs> it seems very hard to find yeah. people, people, people like that. Um, no, there are so many, so many issues, aren't there? In uh, well, I mean, I can relate a little bit. I, I haven't uh, grown up as one of Jehovah's Witnesses myself. Just Church of England there, and uh, uh, I'd been a little bit disappointed along the way with the uh, with the kind of hypocrisy surrounding religion or the lack of, of desire to um, to get to the truth and the contradictions with. Uh, you know, with the thoughts of is the Bible God's word or not, and if it is, then uh, of course that would be the the source of our information, and you know that would kind of, as it says there in the Bible, set things straight for us. If, yes. You know that that was a big issue for me, and yes. uh, that the Bible wasn't referred to as the um, as the authority. It's more more of a traditional church tradition and practice. Uh, well, it, it it was a little bit. Uh, it felt hypocritical to me, and um, I, I, I started a, a study of the Bible. Um, I was in my early twenties when I was still searching for, for things and the purpose of life and that kind of thing. There, so um, yeah, it's 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 interesting to have been to spend some time.